In this video, I'm going to help you prepare for your Orion installation. We'll discuss best practices for setting up your environment for three different sizes of installations, small, medium, and large, for both the application server and the database server. We'll also walk through some prep steps that you can take ahead of time to ensure a smooth installation. As always, make sure that you read and fully understand the system requirements thoroughly before planning your installation. This video is intended as a guide, but it doesn't replace those requirements. Let's first take a look at what I mean by small, medium, and large environments. As every environment is different, we gauge the environment size by the number of elements you will be monitoring. Your element count is the number of network objects you plan to monitor. For NPM, these network objects will be nodes, interfaces, and volumes. A small installation generally tends to be an SL100, SL250, or SL500 license with less than 1,000 monitored elements. A medium installation is an SL500 or SL2000 license with less than 6,000 monitored elements. And a large or scaled installation is an SLX or unlimited license with one or more additional polling engines monitoring more than 6,000 elements. Before we go into the system requirements for each different sized installation, let's first discuss the requirements that are common between all of them. Your Orion server will need a gigabit Ethernet network card, and if you're installing Orion on a virtual server, that will need to be a dedicated gigabit network card. It should not be shared with other virtual machines on that host. There's a simple reason for this. SNMP tends to get lower priority than other network traffic types, and since a lot of your monitoring is likely to be done using SNMP, you may see performance issues or drops if the Orion server is competing with other servers for the same busy interface. If you plan on installing Orion on a virtual server, be sure to read the virtual server system requirements. The Orion application server should have at least two 146 gigabyte or larger 15,000 RPM hard drives configured for RAID 1 mirroring. The server needs to be running Microsoft Windows Server 2008 or 2012 64-bit editions. Let's talk about additional hardware requirements for the Orion server by installation size. But before I do, I need to mention that if you plan to install NetFlow Traffic Analyzer, or NTA, then even with a smaller license count, your environment is not considered small anymore since NTA has higher server and database requirements than NPM alone. So if that applies to you, please check the NTA admin guide for more details. All right, first of all, while it may not always be possible, my recommendation will always be to place your SQL database and the Orion installation on separate servers. While placing Orion and SQL on the same server will work for a time for very small environments, you're forcing Orion and SQL to compete for the same limited hardware resources, and this will lead to performance issues in the long run. Another point to note, make sure your Orion server and SQL server are placed locally to each other. They should never be communicating over a WAN. Now, for a small installation, the Orion server should have a 2.5 GHz quad-core CPU and 4 to 8 gigs of RAM. Those RAM requirements may grow depending on the exact size of your environment and how often you need to pull. For a medium environment, you'll still need a 2.5 GHz processor, but you'll want to add more RAM to handle the extra load. Aim for 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. And for a large environment, you'll need a 3 GHz quad-core CPU, and you'll want a lot of RAM. Plan between 16 and 32 gigs to keep up with the large amount of polling. Let's take a look now at a scaled environment. This is an environment where you plan to pull over 10,000 elements. It's known as a scaled environment because in order to pull this many elements, you'll need to have a primary polling engine and at least one additional polling engine. A single polling engine can typically handle around 10 to 12,000 elements. So for each increment of 10 to 12,000 monitored elements, you should plan on an additional polling engine and you'll need to treat each of those additional polling engines as if they were their own SLX environment. The specs for an additional polling engine are the same as those for the primary polling engine. Your primary polling engine communicates with and manages polling across all additional polling engines. It's also responsible for serving the web console to your Orion users. If you're planning on an extremely large installation with a lot of additional polling engines, for example eight or more, Consider using an additional web engine to break out the web services load onto its own server, particularly if you feel that you'll have a lot of concurrent web console users. Additional polling engines do not provide web services. They're only designed to provide additional polling power. 
The key to ensuring that your scaled environment performs well is to ensure that your polling is balanced across all the polling engines. I discuss how to assign nodes to specific polling engines in the video series titled Viewing and Managing Devices. There are a few other points for scaled environments that you'll need to be aware of. All of your polling engines need to be at the same site. A standard additional polling engine is not designed to be placed at a remote site. They and the main polling engine must have low latency, stable access to the SQL database at all times. If you need to install a poller at a remote site, you'll need to use a remote polling engine. This is a different version of the additional polling engine, which has been designed to cope with connectivity loss to the database. It has the capability to buffer data to handle minor outages without a loss of polling data. Finally, the main polling engine and the additional polling engines are in constant communication. They'll communicate over port 17777 and 17778, so you'll need to ensure that these ports are not blocked between your servers. They'll also need to communicate with your database server over port 1433. Let's now take a moment to discuss the best practices for your SQL environment, starting with practices that will benefit all SQL environments regardless of size. Orion Requirements asks that the SQL Server recovery model for the Orion database be set to simple recovery. This is to control the size of the transaction log. Orion produces a very high level of disk I.O. to the database, so the transaction log can quickly grow out of control when set to other recovery models. Using simple recovery mode improves performance and reduces the transaction log file size. You'll also need to make sure that the SQL Server you plan to use supports mixed mode authentication or SQL authentication, as Orion will need to use a SQL user in order to read and write to the database. As for common hardware requirements, there aren't many, and we will discuss the differences in hardware specs for each environment over the next few minutes. The main common hardware requirement will be that your SQL Server will need dual, and yes, I did say dual, 3 GHz quad-core CPUs. For very large environments, you may need to increase the number of cores if you're seeing a lot of CPU usage. You'll also certainly want a gigabit Ethernet connection on your server for large environments. You can get away with lower bandwidth speeds for small environments, but for bigger medium environments and large environments, don't let your NIC become the bottleneck. Your SQL Server storage and RAM configurations are crucial for a high-performing SQL Server so crucial that we're going to break them down and talk about each for all three environment sizes. When it comes to deciding on your storage configuration for the SQL Server, there are a couple of rules to follow. First, get a server with a hardware RAID controller with a battery backed up write back cache. This provides significantly improved write performance and the battery backup will help protect data integrity in case of an outage. This remains true no matter what your environment size and it's worth the investment. As for your RAID setup, the golden rule is use RAID 1 for any operating system related storage, the operating system or the page file, and use RAID 10, also known as RAID 1 plus 0, for any SQL related storage, your database files and your transaction log files. Don't be tempted by RAID 5 or RAID 6 for anything on your SQL server. It's a cheaper option, but it's not designed to handle high disk I.O. and your performance will suffer. For both small and medium environments, your storage array can be set up in the same way. Use mirrored drives, otherwise known as RAID 1 for the operating system, and a separate array of six disks configured in RAID 10, also again known as RAID 1 plus 0, for your database files. That size array can store both your database file and transaction log files for your environments of this size. And again, regardless of your deployment size, make sure that you're using a hardware RAID controller with a BBU write-back cache. For large environments, you'll also need to put more planning into your disk subsystems. In fact, you'll need four disk subsystem arrays. Two of these disk subsystem arrays should be configured as RAID 1. Use one for the operating system itself and one for the page file and any extra storage that you need on the server. Use 15K RPM disks for both arrays and set up the mirroring array with 146 gigabyte disks. The third disk array will be for the SQL data file. This is the MDF file and its file groups, if any. Use six 15K RPM disks for this RAID 10 array and use either 146 gigabyte or 300 gigabyte disks. If you're planning to store a lot of syslog and trap messages, have multiple polling engines, or plan to poll at shorter polling intervals, you'll need to consider the larger disk sizes.
The fourth and last disk array will be for the SQL transaction log file. Again, your SQL Server recovery mode should be set to simple only, so this transaction file should be relatively small in comparison to your SQL database file sizes. However, it's an extremely busy file. Every write or update transaction taken by SQL is stored in the transaction log file to protect data integrity in the event of a sudden power failure. With simple recovery, as each update is written to the disk, the transaction in the transaction log file can be overwritten keeping the file size small. Because of the way the transaction log works, SQL will be reading and writing to both the SQL data files and the transaction log file concurrently. By splitting the transaction log file out onto its own storage array, you'll see a large increase in disk I.O. performance. Give your transaction log file a RAID 10 array across four 15K RPM disks. The total size of your Orion database files will vary depending on how many elements you're monitoring, how often you want to pull them, and how long you need to retain the polling data as well as how much detail you need to be able to see in that polling data. It will also depend on how many devices are sending syslogs and trap messages to the Orion system and whether they've been configured to send only pertinent information or whether they're spamming debug messages too. Now let's talk about RAM requirements for your SQL Server. When it comes to RAM, even in a small environment, you'll want your server to have at least 8 gigs. If you can afford to add more, do. This is definitely one of those areas where bigger is always better. The more RAM you can provide your SQL Server, the less continuous paging your SQL Server will need to do, and the better it will perform. Where possible, SQL will try to serve database read requests from memory. The more of your database that fits in RAM, the better performance you'll get from your web console, especially when viewing reports or graphs or other resources that rely on larger SQL queries to display their data. For a medium environment, you'll want between 8 and 16 gigs of RAM, and for a large environment, you'll need much more RAM, between 32 and 64 gigs of expandable RAM. And again, if you can afford to add more, do. This allows more of your database to be served directly from RAM. Finally, and this last point is a critical one for all environment sizes, always, always reserve some RAM for your operating system on the SQL Server. SQL will suck up every byte of RAM it can get to the point where it will affect operating system responsiveness. By reserving a minimum of 1 gig of RAM for the server OS, your operating system is always guaranteed the RAM it needs to run smoothly. If you have other applications on the server, Increase the reserved RAM size to ensure there is adequate RAM for all of the applications and the operating system. This is so vitally important to the health of your SQL environment that we're going to show you exactly where this is configured in the following short demo. The way this reservation works is you need to define the maximum allowed memory that SQL Server can use. So for example, if you have a server with 16 gigs of RAM, you can define this memory setting to allow SQL to consume up to a maximum of 14 and a half gigs. This can be done by your database administrator or can be configured on your SQL Server using Microsoft's SQL Management Studio tool. Set the maximum server memory option to limit the amount of RAM that will be available to your SQL Server installation. So now that we've spoken about best practices and our system requirements, let's take a quick look at some of the prep steps that you can take to ensure a clean installation. First, examine and prepare your infrastructure. On the server or servers where you plan to install Orion, check if you have any antivirus software installed. If you do, you'll find a full list of exclusions to add to your AV software in the administrator's guide. Getting this done in advance of your installation will ensure that the AV software won't cause any hiccups during the install. Check the system requirements and confirm that what you have available is sufficient. Also, this one is for smaller businesses with limited available servers. Never install Orion on the same server as a domain controller or a RIM BlackBerry server. For your Orion server, there's a little bit of configuration you can do in advance to speed up the installation process. You'll need to use the local administrator account for these steps, and in fact, you'll want to use that local admin account for the installation as well. A pro tip for you, the local admin account is not the same as a domain account with local admin rights. Make sure you're using a local account with admin rights as a domain account is subject to your domain group policies. They might not cause you grief, but then again they might, so don't take the chance. Stick with a local admin account. Alright, so here are the steps. 
First, install the .NET frameworks. You'll need both .NET 3.5.1 and 4.03. These can be downloaded from Microsoft if they're not already a part of your server image. Check Programs and Features under the control panel to see if you've already got them installed. Next, you'll want to enable the web server role on your server before the Orion install. This will install IIS on your server and prepare it for handling the Orion web console. To do this, click on Start, Administrative Tools, Server Manager. Click on Roles and Add Roles. On the Before You Begin page, click Next. Select Web Server IIS on the Server Roles page, then click Next again. On the Confirmation page, confirm your changes, click Next, and proceed through the installation. Now, while you're still in the Server Manager tool, open Features and click on Add Features. And you'll want to add Microsoft Messaging feature here, otherwise known as MSMQ. For your SQL Server, if this is run by a separate DBA team, you'll need to contact them in advance and request the SA username and password. Now, this may scare them, so let's briefly discuss what Orion needs this for so that you can provide them with that information in advance. This will be required by the initial first run of the Orion Configuration Wizard to create your new Orion database, and also to create a new SQL user for Orion to use in its database communications. The Orion user will be created only with access to the Orion database itself, and it will not have SA rights. The SA username and password will not be used again after the database has been created and this user account set up. Any other times you run the wizard, you can now enter in the new SQL user account and password. All right, so that wraps up our discussion on the system requirements and best practices for preparing your Orion installation. As a reminder, your main prep steps for a successful installation include configuring the antivirus exclusions on your application server, installing using the local admin account, and getting the software prerequisites installed before you begin. You'll also need to check with the DBA team to get the SQL Server SA username and password before you start, as it will be needed during the Orion installation for the setup process. Now, the next video in this series will walk you through how to complete an Orion installation and will guide you through the options outlined in the Orion Configuration Wizard.